Namaste. I was going to read an old writing that was done last year, I believe, when the blood moon visions were flowing. And this one is called The Best Seat in the House. 5 a.m. Vision. Mother Mary floating in the cosmos. She puts her hand on my forehead and brushes it gently as if to shut my eyes. Then a large vision of a cross emanating light, luminescent, light, light. Then what is heard in my mind? Who is Siddhananda? And I see a reflection of this form looking back, shrugging her shoulders like, I don't know. Then this poem. Does the cosmos know who Siddhananda is? The cosmos does not know who Siddhananda is. Does Mary know who Siddhananda is? Mary does not know who Siddhananda is. Does Christ know who Siddhananda is? Christ does not know who Siddhananda is. Does Guru know who Siddhananda is? Guru does not know who Siddhananda is. Does Buddha know who Siddhananda is? Buddha does not know who Siddhananda is. Do the angels know who Siddhananda is? The angels do not know who Siddhananda is. Does the earth know who Siddhananda is? The earth does not know who Siddhananda is. Do the stars know who Siddhananda is? The stars do not know who Siddhananda is. Do the heavens know who Siddhananda is? The heavens do not know who Siddhananda is. Does the sun know who Siddhananda is? The sun does not know who Siddhananda is. Who is Siddhananda? I don't know. There is an image of cherry blossoms against a full moon. Mary is here, and hearing Christ is here too. 7.45 a.m. Some vision still coming. Most of yesterday did not feel the imagery strong, so much less so than the days prior. Then what I saw were my feet dangling down. Different shoes were on my feet as the different forms lived and lives walked. Such clear, sharp imagery as before. There was a hole in the rocky substance I was standing on that opened up a bit with light penetrating through. Then, my vision was brought up close to the hand of it felt like a woman. She wore stunning gold on her fingers, brilliant gold. Her attire was rich, brightly jeweled. Opulent, lux are the words that come to mind. This imagery is much clearer, brighter than real life. I was able to zoom in on this imagery as before when doing the work and feel and see each curve, cut, shimmer, and vibration of beauty through my form, mind, and spirit. Since not feeling the imagery for even part of a day, it was like, wow, I could see like that. Almost as if I had forgotten the feeling, like there it is. As if I had found again a part of my way that seemed so normal as it had been going on for so long, waving in and out for years. Same as if I have brown hair, no big deal in a way, just kind of part of who I am. But now seeing it again like this, it felt amazing and cherished in a different way entirely. Then some imagery came through of remembrances of seeing brilliant diamonds perfectly cut with reflections of the world dancing within it, zooming in on experiences of souls on the other side, their lives, what they were wearing, their countenance, and having a peek at their internal emotional life, as well as being able to read the book of their soul, the feeling of it being right there, so bright and clear. being deeply immersed in the scenery of nature so glorious, as if being at the heartbeat of Mother Earth, rich and dark, with her fine way that gives the gift of life, seasons, the gift of earth energy, of love and light, birth, death, decay, and regeneration. 
so generous in her giving, at the center of it cleansing, cleansing, always cleansing. Having the honor of being brought into the cave of spirit where the lingam sits dark and mysterious, rich in feeling and depth of love, and going right into that lingam, too, as a doorway opened, and I was taken there to view the passing of scenery in such a graceful manner and how it relates to the journey of awakening. Seeing new fresh growth and brightening of precious life occur right before the eyes in a miraculous way. Feeling the dance of bright souls in their joy and transformation. Being taken through mystic doorways of light and beauty so vivid, angelic, heart-wrenchingly beautiful and precious in its feeling, love, and grace. Viewing the sky, the clouds, the waterfalls, clear and rinsing, the birds' flight, sunrise and set, the ocean waves crashing up close and personal. Viewing and flying through, above, and below, and within the earth mountains, as soft light breaks through, dreamlike and magical. And, of course, seeing the moon, the moon, with all its dynamic phases and changes that give bright mystery to the sky daily. And also brought into the cave of death, where horrors occur and hearts and spirits are left broken, yet drenched still in grace through this showing. All of these scenes viewed up close, crystal clear, and vivid in their dance. O oh, Grace, you have given me the best seat in the house of this fine viewing. You have given me the best seat in the house. Of this I am beyond appreciative. As always, it is not my will but thy will, and I do desire for this journey to complete if it means being without these visions, so be it. Now the curtain is closing on this show, slowly, little by little. One day I will read this writing and look back and say, Really? I was given the privilege of seeing all of that. How heart-achingly beautiful, strange, and mysterious.